Wait for it. And there we go. All right. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves 10 yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome to another gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well today. Uh, I thought I would jump back to a bit of a classic that I just haven't played in a while. Uh, and so I kind of thought I'd see how it does in the meta. Generally, I feel like this is not a great deck to play uh, personally, but I do think that it's got some interesting tech now. Uh, and truth be told, I haven't actually played it since some of the new kind of shrine updates. We've gotten, obviously, Honden of Life's Web. We've got Knight's Reach, uh, Cleansing Fire. Uh, is there any other of the new ones? I think that's it. Um, anyway, basically, those were all like old shrines that were initially printed like a long time ago. Oh, yes, Honden of Infinite Rage. These were all printed a very long time ago in Champions of Kamigawa uh, and finally given up to us on Arena as well. And going in with Sanctum of All, uh, the Sanctum of Calm Waters, Fruitful Harvest, Stone Fangs, and Tranquil Light all basically kind of build on each other. So the idea is you basically control the game with things like Blood Chief's Thirst, Blink of an Eye, Banishing Light, uh, Wrath of God, that kind of stuff, and then be able to uh, es essentially just gain a bunch of value over time by throwing out all these shrines. So we're going to see if it works. This is a Chroma version, so it does have Chromatic Lantern, which is just absolutely necessary, in my opinion, with the uh, the number of colors that you need. Um, and then it does run a few, you know, Trium lands, things like that, all kinds of really specific tech lands to give us the cards that we need. Uh, overall, though, the idea is to get a bunch of these uh, these Hondens or Shrines out, gain a bunch of value off of each one. So some of them deal damage and you gain that much life. Some of them just hit, dam hit any target for something, uh, provide mana, draw cards, all kinds of fun stuff. Discard cards from the opponent's hand, uh, give us tokens, give us life, whatever you need, we got it. Uh, and then the Sanctum of All is really the big one that allows you to uh, pull out uh, any of the shrines that you'd like from your deck so or actually in fact your graveyard as well so very very powerful deck if it gets off we'll see if it actually works but uh we are going to run this through three games we'll see how it goes let's go ahead and jump into game one all right guys and here we are for game number one and this is a pretty easy keep uh with the blood cheese thirst we can kill something early and then we do have the chromatic lanterns as needed the sanctum of calm waters is also quite helpful to to dig through our deck ever so slightly so uh, we're actually going to lead on the uh, the Ketria Triumph. Any of these tapped lands, I want to get down early so we can definitely hit what we need to hit later on. Um, we also do have Banishing Light now, so that kind of helps in tandem with the Blood Chief's Thirst that hopefully we can do some major, major damage. Uh, but what do we want to do this turn, I guess is the question. Um, I think the play is going to be just Banishing Light. Chromatic Lantern is very good, but we actually have all the mana we need to uh, to play the Sanctum of Calm Waters next turn, so I'm not really all that worried about that. Um, and so I figured this is probably just going to be the best thing to do. Uh, we do have to worry about the Polyraptor combo, which I assume may be in this list. Um, we'll see what they pull out from their, their deck here. This Dino's list is always a, an interesting one, we will say. What did they get? Uh, just sign to reach your opponent controls. Okay. Um, I think what we're gonna do is just, so this is, I mean, the Forerunner is a very good card. Uh, is dealt damage, deals five to creature and opponent controls. We actually don't have any creatures though. So I'm gonna go ahead and just play the Calm Water Sanctum for now. We'll see what they have. Uh, if they just run out the Raptor, it's not the end of the world. We do have Wrath of God in our list, so we have an answer. Um, and in fact, we, will be able to uh to play it here at some point so yes i would love to take that action unfortunately it is just one land this time but that's okay uh we'll throw you away um and i think the play is just this chromatic lantern uh and then i guess banishing light on the forerunner Again, this this raptor doesn't do that much against us, truth be told. Like we don't have any, 
damage dealing stuff or any creatures really uh the way we win is just specifically through the shrines okay wow so i'm very glad we got the forerunner out of there because that raptor draws a lot of cards unfortunately so we just kind of have to hope we hit a wrath i think a wrath would really finish them off blood chief's thirst really helps as well we can kind of get rid of the raptor that way um they might shock their own creature yeah honestly a solid play uh dual shot is great in this uh scenario i would love to draw let's see what we get and dotha trium eh i'm gonna go ahead and uh and ditch that let's uh let's play the basic we're gonna go ahead and kill the rip draw raptor um and i think the play is just another chromatic lantern we have all the mana in the world at this point so it's really just a matter of we need to draw more more shrines unfortunately we're kind of getting unlucky here and not hitting very many shrines even with the sanctum which is just a bit surprising uh totally fine but all right sure um happily do this uh give me a shrine a blink uh i'll take a blink that's fine let's see so again i think the play is just going to be to kill the rib jaw raptor <laughs> Uh, and we can actually uh, draw a card here. So what we're going to do is kicker this uh, and most likely just bounce the, the raptor here. Oh, interesting. Um, okay, let's see what they do. <laughs> Very curious here. Uh, I kind of just want them to sacrifice it. No, actually, I don't because uh, I get to do this. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and draw a card here. Uh, they're gonna get what they want back here, so that's not really a big problem for us. It doesn't really matter. They get to kill one of these Banishing Lights, uh, which is, I assume, the thing that they killed. It might be the Shrine. Okay. Honestly, I'd rather it be that, so that's kind of fine. Oh, perfect. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, so... Now, granted, we do have to wait a turn for this to do anything, but the idea here is that this is really the the big the big daddy of them all, because now we just get to uh, to basically draw a bunch of stuff, um, and most likely we just pull this Sanctum of Calm Waters back out. Honestly, um, uh, let's search graveyard. Let's go for the Sanctum. Uh, then this is going to trigger. I'm going to take that action. Ooh, uh, okay, we do have to discard a card. Let's see here. I think it's just Paradise Druid. Because uh, truth be told, we do this, and then we just exile their board. <laughs> uh, which is pretty good. We hit even. That gets everything off the table. And now the, the Honda of Infinite Rage does deal with at least some of their creatures. It's not everything, but there we go. We got the win. That is game number one, guys. Let's go ahead. Let's jump into game number two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And uh, I mean, this is a keep. Uh, it's very, very focused on just playing these Hondans out uh, or these shrines. But I think we try it. Um, I'm not super, super positive on it. I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, but we do have all the I mean, we need a black source, I guess, for the Knight's Reach. But other than that, we're actually doing OK. And Sanctum of the Fruitful Harvest actually does that for us. So. I think we're gonna end up kind of running that route first um yeah i mean we just play a green source and see what happens um thankfully the opponent's not doing a lot so far i mean they're they're just kind of drawing some cards hopefully it doesn't get too out of hand but we'll see all right uh let's go fruitful harvest here um we might be able to get a lot of cards out of their hand here which actually could be a positive for them but we'll see um Infinite Rage is good, but I think the Knight's Reach is going to be potentially better. Um, I'm also curious what land we draw here. Okay, well, in that case, it might actually be better to play the, the other. Um, let's see. If we do red and then white... Um, yeah, I think it's just this. Uh, so this allows us to potentially kill the vampire, uh, which is at least just slowing down the clock. We do really need a uh, basically any kind of sweeper, um, so hopefully we can get there, but we'll see. It's going to get rid of that, which is nice. There's a banishing light. Um, that's actually really good. So let's do this. Let's do this. Um, 
So we can do this and Banishing Light if we'd like, or we can play Sanctum of All, but we don't have Banishing Light at that point. So I think the play is just this, Banishing Light. Um, I'm actually going to take out the Aerialist here. Normally I would go for the Veto because that's obviously like their big combo piece finisher. Um, but I feel like for the time being, we just kind of need to stay in the game. <laughs> um, and we can kind of kill this coming up here this turn. So uh, let's get rid of Veto now, though. Uh, they're going to have to discard three cards, uh, which is very nice. And hopefully we get some good stuff. Oh, they just give up. Shrines, man, at their best. All right, uh, cool. Well, let's go ahead and jump into game three. And here we are, guys, for our third and final game. Uh, and this is an interesting one, but I do think we keep it. We've got the black sources here. We don't have a green for the Paradise Druid, which is a bit odd, but uh, we can get the Sanctum of Stonefangs down turn two, which is really solid. Uh, or we can Blood Chief's Thirst, obviously, depending on what they play. Uh, if it's a Soul Warden, I think we just kill it. Thankfully, it's, well, good and bad, it's not. Uh, Let's play this and let's play the Sanctum um, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, opponent being very kind, just saying hello, good game. I love it. Normally we don't see that, so I'm very happy to see that. Uh, we really just need some mana at this point. I think that's really the big deal here, um, but we can actually kill this, so that's not a problem. That's a good Sanctum, actually, uh, but we do still need a land. So I'm hoping next draw is just any untapped land would be amazing, because then we can get the Sanctum down. Uh, that's going to help us draw into more lands, because we already have another Shrine out, and that can hopefully get us to where we need to be. The Sanctum of Stone Fangs is quite good against these life gain decks, uh, because it keeps them away from... Oh, man, it's a tapped land. <laughs> keeps them away from the life total that they need to get to. Um, I actually think we down that one. We don't really need it. Um, I, any Sanctum, any Shrine is very, very good, but I think there are much better options that we could pull, uh, and so I'm just going to hold off on that. Um, cool. All right. Gain some life. I think the play right now is going to be Sanctum of, of Calm Waters here. Um, we do want to sweep at some point, but I think we kind of want to try and hit more than just what they've got right now. Uh, we can't hit both, so we, we really need to get a little bit more than that if we can. That's very good. Uh, yep. A little scary, uh, but we'll see. They're going to give lifelink, I'm sure, to something. Yep. Worth noting, though, with all of this that they are doing, we're still only down to 18, uh, and thanks to that early... Sanctum, we're, we're kind of where we need to be. Let's take this action, get a land. Yes. All right. Uh, we'll get rid of Paradise Druid, I think. We don't really need that. Uh, let's get you down. It might just be the Honden of Life's Web. A uh, little worried. So if they do 5, 10, that's a lot of damage. Um, let's see what other options do we have. We could play Chromatic Lantern and then Paradise Druid. Uh, we could alternatively just Extinction Event. Um, Hmm. Part of me really wants to extinction event when they've got more to do, but I'm gonna we're gonna go for it. We're going for the cool points here, guys. Let's see if they can kill us this turn. If they can't, it's uh it's great for us. If they can, so be it. It's fine. Uh alright. They're gonna put a 1-1 counter. If they gain life, which I assume they're gonna just target this, yeah. Alright. That's not us dead though. Which is important. Um <laughs> Cool. Uh, so we're going to get three of these little one ones, which very crucially just endlessly kind of block for us, which is great. Um, I would love to take that action. Uh, we'll throw back a land. We actually don't need that many lands anymore. Uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead and uh, and kill this little guy. Um, and now we can extinction event for odd, which gets rid of just that. Um, and now we're pretty well set. <laughs> um, so now the hope is that we just like basically stabilize like crazy against this deck and they just don't have anything. And based on their last couple turns, I don't think they've got a lot. Um, okay. They get a card back. That's good, but it can't attack this turn. And I mean, we have another extinction event, so <laughs> that's not really a problem. And just a million little one ones to block if we need to. 
So I'm not super worried about this. Uh, yeah. All right, uh, we're gonna shoot him for three. We're gonna take the draw action. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, we're gonna put the red grain triumph back. We'd actually don't want more of that. Um, let's do this. Easy first step. Uh, let's throw out the lantern, uh, because why not? We're gonna throw out the paradise druid, because why not? And then we're gonna attack for three. Um, yeah, I mean, Shrines is kind of doing it. Like, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Shrines is kind of killing it, guys. Um, I, I like this deck a lot. I like this deck a, a really a good bit. Um, perfect. We can Extinction Event that. <laughs> um, or just Blood Chief's Thirst. I mean, might as well just do that, I suppose. All right, uh, let's, let's draw a few cards. Let's get another, we need another Shrine. That's what we need. Unfortunately, we didn't get it, but that's okay. I'm going to get rid of this Fabled Passage because truth be told, I don't know how many basics we've got in the deck. All right, we're going to do this. We're going to kill this. Why not? Uh, the cool thing is if we Wrath, it doesn't matter. I mean, we obviously are going to lose some momentum, but we're we're endlessly generating tokens. Like we get three creatures minimum every turn. Um, so that's not really a problem. <laughs> Um, the only, I'm trying to think what we could worry about, and there's not a lot, um, uh, and they don't seem to be drawing much of anything either, which is kind of nice. All right. Give me another shrine. Give me one more. Let's see what we get. Um, infinite rage would be kind of sick just cause it would hasten up the clock a little bit. Oh, look at that. Uh, yep. We're going to take you out, but we get to play both. So that's fun. Sanctum of all. Wait for it. And there we go. All right. Get infinite rage down. And because why not? Why did I? They're good gaming us. Do we get it? Do we get it? I think we get it. I think we're going to get it. All right, I, this is sick. I'm just loving this. Oh, they have Bolus's Citadel. Well, pardon me. Okay, uh, this might work. Although, I don't know. Depends what they have in their deck. They could do a lot of damage potentially, but if they just don't have much, like, kind of doesn't matter. Whenever a creature, ooh. Okay, that's kind of sick. Um, we're just gonna kill this. Uh, we'll search our deck. Um, we'll go with you, I guess, just because. I, w I would love to gain life. Um, so we do lose some life here. Which means they gain life. Oh, that's clever. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, I'm into it. This deck is sweet. I see the combo now. Uh, not that it really matters. We have Extinction Event, but still really sick. <laughs> is this an infinite? No, it's not. It's only this number of times. All right, that's kind of cool. We should have uh, infinite raged them, not uh, they oopsed us. All right, take action. We'll throw you back. Uh, do we need to do this again? I'm gonna say no. <laughs> uh, let's throw you down, let's throw you down. Uh, let's extinction event for odd. They're, their talking is actually slightly annoying me, um, but that's okay. It's an inf or Knight's Reach. And let's attack for a butt ton. Guys, we got a 3 and 0. Oh my gosh. All right, uh, let's, uh, let's talk about this. Wow. Okay, uh, well, that was a little unexpected, I'll be honest. Um, I kind of had the notion that Shrines might be a bit slow. Um, not that it was a bad deck. We've known that this is a good deck for a while. It's a very fun list, I think, too. Um, but it can kind of take a while. And sometimes, uh, you know, if you're against like goblins or elves in particular, if you don't have the sweeper or you don't aren't able necessarily to kill something with uh, a blood cheese thirst or something like 
it's uh it's a little tricky it's it can get a very very dicey very quickly but thankfully we got there and it worked great uh so i love it uh we got a nice solid three and oh and i hope you guys enjoyed it this was a fantastic one i highly recommend if you have not played the shrines deck um it's a good experience to have is what i will suggest i think it's very very worth it uh it's a fun list it forces you to think in uh a slightly different way maybe than you're used to um, it is a control deck at heart, in my opinion, uh, but not in the counter control way. It's more in the sweeper and then gain, you know, incremental advantage, which honestly isn't necessarily how a true control deck would function anyway. But it, regardless, it forces you to think a little bit differently based on what the opponent is playing and which shrine you should get at what time and that kind of thing. And so... Uh, it's a, it's worth noting that it exists and worth noting that it is very fun to play, uh, especially when it works as well as it did today. But you know what, guys? I loved it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic Tuesday. I hope you guys have enjoyed all the gameplay videos we've been putting out recently. It has been great, and thank you so much for the support. Also, call out on Twitter. I wish I remembered the guy's name, but uh, somebody actually said, like, or asked, uh, you know, if what channels out there are underrated and that kind of stuff. And somebody was very kind to put us. So thank you very much. Uh, I did thank them on Twitter as well, but that was very kind of you. I really appreciate it. And thank you guys. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We were, we're very happy to have you here. Uh, and it's, it's great to be a part of this awesome community. So thank you guys so much. I love you all. I'll see you again very soon for some more gameplay videos.